all this talk about using techniques that lead to classical or respondent conditioning and affecting how our dog feels about a stimulus inevitably leads to the following very common question. Are we just changing feelings here or are we changing behaviors too? The short answer is yes, we're also changing behaviors. In theory, classical conditioning and operant learning are two different things. In real life, these two occur together all the time. But to address a fearful response to a stimulus by using DS and CC, we'll use techniques that will result in one type of learning taking place before the other. And note that desensitization and counter conditioning methods are not the only way to change fearful behaviors. You can absolutely achieve the same goal through operant learning. And there are arguments for preferring one approach over another. But for the purposes of this course, we'll focus on how to properly apply DS and CC methods. So most of you are here because you want to change your dog's behavior. You need for your dog to be able to behave in a way that's different from the way he's currently behaving in a given context. He hides when you need to trim his nails, or he paces and barks while he's riding in the car, or he chases the lawnmower, or he barks and lunges when a stranger approaches. These are all behaviors. These are things that your dog does. So far, we've been talking exclusively about how your dog feels, and we've been working toward practicing techniques through which we can affect his emotional response. We haven't been paying any attention to his behavior because classical conditioning is not contingent on behavior. An association is made regardless of behavior. And this course is about applying techniques that affect your dog's emotional response to certain stimuli. And through these techniques, you're working on improving how your dog feels about the presence of the stimulus that he fears. And when applying DS and CC methods, this step comes first. Then, once you've addressed the fearful response, you'll be able to turn your attention towards reinforcing the behaviors that you want through reward-based training. Now, let's take a look at how operant learning has played a role in shaping your dog's current behavior. Let's say your dog is afraid of the nail clippers. When someone takes his paw to trim his nails, he growls. And as a consequence of his growling, the person lets go of his paw. The dog now growls every time a person touches his paw because it is very effective. He's learned that the consequence immediately following his behavior is one that he likes very much. People let go of his paw. This is operant learning. A consequence following a behavior will either make that behavior more likely to occur again or not. So here we are today with a dog who growls when we touch his paw. Through desensitization and counter conditioning will affect how the dog feels about having his paw touched. By helping him make a new, more positive association between being touched and the appearance of good things, like very high value food, for example, will likely reduce or stop the growling when we touch his paw. By affecting his emotional response, will also affect his behavior. And once that we've positively affected his emotional response, we'll then be able to apply reward-based training techniques to shape the behavior that we need for him to offer. For example, I might begin increasing the amount of time that he keeps his paw in my hand, in other words, not pulling his paw away, before I deliver a treat. Operant learning is now taking place. His behavior is what is causing the consequence. During classical conditioning, the food would appear regardless of what he was doing. This is how we affect how he feels. Now, during operant conditioning, the food appears as a consequence of his behavior. This is how we affect how he behaves. Now, here are a couple more examples of using DS and CC techniques before using reward-based techniques. Let's say your dog paces and barks in the car. We'll work towards helping him feel better about being in the car in general by pairing this with something good, like food, regardless of whether he's standing, sitting, lying down, or moving around. And once that's achieved, and only then, we'll begin asking him to sit inside the car before receiving a reward. Emotion, then behavior. And here's another example. Your dog ducks and moves away when the vet tries to touch him. We'll work towards helping him feel better about being in the exam room, and then being in the exam room in the presence of the vet. 
and then of being touched by the vet by pairing these scenarios with something good, like food. <laughs> and once that's achieved, and only then, we'll begin rewarding him for standing still while the vet examines him. Emotion, then behavior. So first, we'll begin by helping our dogs make a positive association with the scary thing. And once that's been accomplished, and only then, we'll begin asking for certain behaviors before we reward them.